Hey guys, Rox here. You can find all of my builds for Diablo 4's upcoming Season 6 and expansion launch for Vessel of Hatred on Mobilytics. You will find links to all of my planners and their matching variations in the descriptions of all of my videos and build showcases. question remains, did Azurath and Frostburn survive the PTR? Well, the answer is, we don't know. As of right now, as of last week, when I got to play Vessel early, their lucky hit values remained exactly the same as PTR. The values are high, but not game-breaking. If these items were to remain the same, this would open up some builds that haven't had much love lately. Ice Shards and Ball Lightning come to mind. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean Blizzard can't change their values before the launch of the Season 6 and Vessel of Hatred, so I am slightly apprehensive to release this video because their values can change at any given moment at Blizzard's discretion. Please note, what you see in this video may not reflect what we see in the version we get to play this week as this is an earlier release. I remain hopeful as this build is one of the most fun I've played since the game's release and I wanted to share it with all of you. I have played numerous variations of this build and have still yet to settle on a final one. I originally was using the new sorcerer key passive, Enlightenment, which was not working as intended and has since been fixed according to the patch notes. But because it was bugged in the version I tested, I swapped over to the Veer's key passive instead. That passive also provides nice damage reduction, which is much needed in higher torments. I think I still prefer Enlightenment for my choice in key passive but we will need to test further once the expansion releases this week. Here are examples of gameplay footage using both passives. Of course, anything with demons is going to die quicker due to perdition and the bugs along with it. I wanted to include examples with and without them. Slither is not a demon and one of the tankiest pit bosses. This version of Chain Lightning is different than my box version with Constellation being the cause for huge damage chunks. Slither's health goes down slowly, but steadily. Obviously, this is not nearly as fast as my video from the PTR. Since that version, we have experienced major nerfs to both Petrify and Warcry runes, nerfs in the glyphs on the Paragon board, specifically the Eliminator one taking a big hit. My gear in the PTR video was significantly better. This gear does not have the correct ancestral affixes, nor the correct masterworking. And my runes aren't level 100. So there are significant differences since the PTR and this video. I also tested this build with the new constellation aspect on Amulet, and I think a hybrid with Azurath and Frostburn has potential as well, given constellation stays as is. Some changes I would like to note specifically in the pit. Some of the elite affixes have changed. Those electric balls are much easier to dodge now and have a telegraph noting where they will spawn from. Fire Enchanted shuts off when the mob is crowd controlled. The obelisk pillars, however, are now turrets and target you rather than going between pillars. In my opinion, those are the most obnoxious now, but still dodgeable. I'm happy with the changes and kudos to whoever made them. From what I've seen, they did away with the second shade that spawned those really hard to see tornadoes and replaced it with what appears to be Blood Bishop's thick lines as in this video. 
They're very easy to dodge and very easy to see. I believe all the other shades may have stayed the same. I didn't encounter any new bosses, and the existing ones in Season 5 seem to have remained. Personally, I didn't run into any mob density issues like I did during the PTR. Boss HP has been cut, with the trash being tankier. I feel that is a very good change. Overall, the pit feels much better than it did in Seasons 4 and 5. Hordes is no longer broken up by tiers up through 8. Instead, its difficulty is based on the game difficulty you have selected in Torments 1 through 4. Three different types of Infernal Horde keys drop now with a varying number of waves. You can do either 6, 8, or 10 wave hordes. This is nice if you want to do a little bit of a shorter or a longer one. The Council drops gear once you kill them, so this helps with targeted equipment farming. The GA Ancestral Chest has changed, it now costs 200 instead of 60 ether, the equipment chest has been removed so you can no longer spam for equipment, and both the material and gold chests are single click, spending your remaining ether, so no more need for spam clicking. Alright, let's go over the gear in this build. Up first we have one of the new stars of the expansion, the brand new mythic rarity helm, Heir of Perdition. There have been a lot of bugs around this piece of equipment, specifically doing multiplicative instead of additive damage towards demons. It is a static 60% multiplier, so think God Slayer, but with permanent uptime. The helm also has really high crit chance and lucky hit, both of which are needed for this specific build. Move speed is nice, but not important since I mainly use teleport enchant anyway. Core skills is nice too. For this build, you'll want to hit that GA stat in the crit chance and master word crit chance all three times if you can. When this video was recorded, I didn't have access to patch notes and didn't know the Yom rune for the druid's petrify was going to be nerfed, so hence the rune change. I socketed runes Tom and Zal. Zal gives a 20% increase to HP. The HP will help with keeping our ice armor active. Second, my chess piece of choice is Raymond of the Infinite a longtime favorite for many sorcerer builds. This piece of gear makes it easy to group enemies together. Intelligence and Glass Cannon being the most important GA stats to get with elemental attunement and shocking impact of lesser importance. The stun duration on the unique's affix isn't that big of a deal on this piece as it is on others. Specifically for hordes, I like to be a little bit tankier, so in this run I'm using the new mythic chest, Drought of False Death. Whichever chest you choose to use, you'll want to socket the runes Lith and Ohm. This gives us access to the Barbarian's Warcry, increasing our damage by 15% for 6 seconds. Next up, we use the Ancestral Frostburn Gloves. They have to be Ancestral as the lucky hit chance to deal cold and fire damage is much higher than their regular counterpart. The attack speed and additive fire cold damage is nice too. The chance to freeze is good if you failed rolling chance to freeze on your boots, but that number value doesn't matter much. For masterworking, you'll want to crit lucky chance to deal cold damage all three times. Another alternative you can use if you don't find GA Frostburn Gloves are a good pair of Fists of Fate as close to 300% as possible. Fists stagger bosses very quickly. If you choose to equip those gloves, You'll want an ancestral pair with lucky hit chance being the greater affix and masterwork that all three times as well. For pants, it's pretty obvious. We're using Axial Conduit, which were introduced in Season 5. These pants have good stats all around. The bottom number on the unique matters the most, so get that as high as possible. Try to find an ancestral pair with the chance for Chain Lightning to hit twice being the greater affix and masterwork that all three times. 
The change in temper from chance to cast twice to chance to hit twice was a nice buff to chain lightning in general. We are no longer draining double the mana and instead we're dealing more damage. For boots, the stats will depend on your armor and elemental resistances, so keep that in mind. You can pick two of any of these stats, armor, resist all elements, and max life. You will want to make sure to have GA mana per second as your third stat. Mana per second is influenced by Axial Conduit's maximum mana and resource stat, so getting that as high as possible is nice for mana management. You can also substitute intelligence for armor, max life, etc. if you want to have more damage and less survivability. For tempers, we want chance to freeze and evade cooldown reduction. Imprint Orange Herald onto the boots to help with unstable currents uptime. Azure Wrath is the weapon of choice in this build. Like Frostburn, the lucky hit chance to deal cold damage is very high on the Ancestral version. Once again, you need an Ancestral version to get those high values. Triple Masterwork lucky hit chance to deal cold damage on this sword. The all stats is nice as it will help activate more yellow bonus nodes on the Paragon board as well. For the amulet slot, you'll want Conjuration Mastery and Devouring Blaze passives. The third affix can be Percentage, Int, or something like Attack Speed. Conjuration Mastery has damage, but I mainly use it for the amount of resource gen it provides since Axial Conduit eats through mana. Try getting a GA of any of those stats and Masterwork Conjuration Mastery passive three times. For tempers, this piece is a little bit of a flex. For your first temper, try to go for crit strike damage. For the second temper, temper what is needed. That could be armor, max life, unstable currents cooldown, etc. Imprint either Shredding Blades or Storm Swell on the amulet. Storm Swell is more damage, but not if your ice armor is constantly getting broken. It is better to use Shredding Blades, if that's the case, it will have better uptime. Ring number one, the mythic Starless Skies. Try to get crit chance as the greater affix. Attack speed is okay too. I try to get my crit chance and attack speed to 100% on this build, so master work accordingly. For the second ring, Talrasha's, another sorcerer staple. Get the bottom affix as close to 25% as possible. Any of the stats as GA on this ring are good on this build. Potent warding helps quite a bit with damage reduction in the resist all department. Finally, we have our offhand. For this, I want an Ancestral since it is a weapon, and item level matters for weapons the most. Intelligence, Max Life, and Lucky Hit to Restore Mana are my choices. Tempers are Crit Strike Damage and Chance for Chain Lightning to hit twice. Try to get 100% Chance for Chain Lightning to hit twice between your chance on Actual Conduit Pants and the Focus. Triple Crit is likely needed. Imprint whichever aspect you didn't imprint on the Amulet, either Storm Swell or Shredding Blades. At this time, I'm not going to go over the skill tree and paragon board in depth. I will show them at the end of the video, or you can check them out in my planner linked below. You can see how quickly this build kills the council. But once again, we will find out on the launch of the DLC if this build actually survived the PTR or not. I will be streaming right when Vessel launches on my Twitch channel, which is also linked in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.